In this presentation, we're going to add a customer deposit using bank feeds. In other words, we're going to be moving on over to the deposit side of things. We're going to be seeing a deposit that's going to go through the bank feeds. And we're going to make the assumption that the deposit is going to be from the customer. And therefore, add that deposit as income from the customer increasing the income on the income statement, increasing the net income. Get ready because we're dropping in with Wave. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're going to start off by opening up our reports down below. So we're going to go to those reports. We're going to be opening up our favorite reports, those being the financial statement reports, the balance sheet, and the income statement or profit and loss. We'll start off with the balance sheet. Selecting that balance sheet, then we're going to duplicate the tab up top. We're going to go back up to the tab up top, right click on it, duplicate that tab. Back to the tab to the left, do the same thing with the income statement, PNL or profit and loss report. So we'll open that one up. And then we're going to duplicate that tab too by going up top, right clicking on that tab and duplicating it. Then we're going to go over to the balance sheet and we will be adjusting the dates for it. Go into the date drop down and we're going to make these dates. It keeps on double clicking on me. It's going to be 2019. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom here and I'm going to show the details so we can kind of drill down on this information. Then we're going to do the same for the income statement. Going to be picking up the dates for the 2019 period and then update these items. So, and then I'm going to go down and show the detail. Now on the, on the income statement, we are now considering the income side of things as opposed to the expense side of things. So we're up here on the top line with the income side of things. So obviously on the balance, on the balance sheet, this is going to be income coming in. The other side is going to be on the cash side. And on the income statement, any income that came in to the company, we're going to assume is going to be income. And the assumption that the software made it is that it was income, but it put it into uncategorized income. Now, the general rule is that hopefully we can we can assume that most deposit, the deposits are going to be income. So let's just take a look at a recap of the income side of things. That's going to be over here. I'm going to go to the flow chart. We're on QuickBooks desktop just to look at the flow chart. So we're in the customer section. If we're thinking of the customer side of things, the deposits that we have over here, the general assumption, if you're on like a cash basis system, then it would be nice if you could generally assume that the deposits you have in your business checking account are from uh, customers and therefore income. So that's going to be the general assumption that you want to have. You want to have a separate checking account for your business and you hopefully you're going to set it up in, in such a way that all, all the money that's going into it is going to be from the business. The money going out will typically be expenses or the money might be going out to you as a draw for for yourself, right? So that's going to be the general rule. So if you have kind of a, a system set up where you're just getting paid automatically, say you got system paid up for for like an e-commerce type of thing. So if you're uh, if you're working with Amazon, you have affiliate marketing and or you have YouTube and you got AdSense and you have uh, other kind of, uh, you know, other places that are giving you electronic payments then all the deposits that you get, you can kind of assume that they're going to be income. Typically, there will be income and you can increase the income accounts for them. Now, if they're electronic payments like that, then you'll actually have the, the customer as well. It'll actually say this is from Amazon and this is from E-Trade, this is from Audible and whatnot. And you can actually add the more detail with that as well. If you're getting deposits in some other for format like cash deposits or some other kind of payments, that are not electronic transfers, then you might not have that added information. You might have a system where you're putting deposits into the bank, uh, and, but and you're just assuming that the, in, in that case, you're not going to have any more detail. There's just going to be a deposit in the bank. And, you, and you're not going to know the customer, but you can have a system set up where you're assuming that all deposits are income. That's going to be the general assumption unless something else is the case. When would something else be the case? Well, that would be the case if you yourself put money in and that would be pretty well known because it would be usually a, a fixed dollar amount. You would know how much you put in. It doesn't happen that often, hopefully, because you want to be taking money out and not putting money in all the time. But if it, you put money in, it would be a fixed dollar amount and probably a round number. Or a loan from the bank would be another reason why it might be a deposit from somewhere else. All right? And then you would categorize those somewhere else. So hopefully you can, you can see those clearly and pull those out. The other problem we, we have with the deposit side of things is that we, if we're in a type of business that needs the accrual process, we might then have the invoice and then the receive payment. We might need to track, in other words, the accounts receivable. So if you're in a type of business where you want to send out invoices to bill the client, rather than a type of business that you're basically just waiting for the deposits to happen, 
then you got to deal with the accounts receivable and making of the invoice. We'll talk more about that in uh, the second month. We'll talk about a situation where we got to deal with uh, the creation of the invoice in uh, the second month. For this time, however, in this month, we're just going to be taking a look at that deposit and recategorizing, assuming every deposit is going to be income. Just also note that if you if you have income and you sell merchandise, then that's going to be another kind of uh, wrinkle in the system. You, you could once again assume everything, every deposit is basically income, but you may have to work in and back into then possibly sales tax that you might have to pay on, on it and possibly uh, the, the, just the tracking of the inventory, the recording of the increase in, in inventory. If you're using this method and you're waiting until it clears the bank before you record the income, just uh, realize then that you're only recording the, the income side of the transaction. That means that you're going to have to basically record the inventory side, the decrease in inventory and the cost to get sold on, a, you know, like a, a periodic type of method. Or in our case, we did it on a cash method. Notice that we said that we purchased inventory. We expensed it as cost to get sold at the point of purchase, which is basically a cash method. And now we're saying we're getting the income and we're going to record the income side of things, which is an increase in the cash and the cost of goods sold. And then we'd have to think about sales tax if sales tax is going to be applicable we'll talk a bit about some methods you can use for sales tax in a future presentation all right so we're going to go back on over here and we're going to go to the first tab then we're going to go down to the accounting and i'm going to go to the transactions and now we're looking for the deposits so these this deposit we're going to say is income and this deposit is income these two we're going to say is either a loan and or from the bank so these two items are going to be income and this would be our default kind of thing. We're saying now there's money coming in. That's going to be income. We're just going to basically assign those every time to income. So I'm going to go ahead and choose an income account. I'll select the drop down here and we're going to go on down to the income accounts. And I want to put this uh, sales item. I'll put it into the sales item. So there we have that. Now note that we also don't have a, a description. And again, that might be the case because if you're just putting the money into the into the bank, it doesn't know it. I mean, if you just put a deposit into the bank, it doesn't have any, anything else other than basically the dollar amount, as opposed to if it's an electronic transfer, then you're going to have that added information. Uh, also, note if you select this item, then you'll get the more detail on the right. So we have nothing in the description at this point. Note that the customer is down below. You can actually add the customer down here. So you can say add customer and add that. So if you do have uh, like an Amazon or something like that, or you know the customer, I would recommend doing that. Amazon would probably be up here. You can copy and paste that then down into the description. What that'll allow you to do is basically uh, run reports, hopefully, by by the customer. So if you have that detail, then I would recommend uh, adding adding the customers as as you go. Uh, uh, so that you can basically get that more detailed types of reports. If you have more detail about that transactions, you can input it here. But just note that that's one of the problems that you may have with a system like this, in that if you do not have the electronic transfers that would tell you basically the, uh, the customers that you're dealing with, then you may not have the detail if you're going to wait till the deposit happens in terms of who the customers are. You might not be able to track by basically customer. All you know is that what the income is. So that's going to be good for your financial statements that'll be good for your tracking for taxes but it would be nice to have that added e information to be able to you know tie that amount to a, a particular customer all right so we're going to do the same thing for the other amount which was the well this one we just tied out i'm going to check that one off and then we had the the 8,438, which I'm going to do the same thing with. So we're going to take this out and we're going to be putting this to the income account. So I'm going to take this and put it to the sales line. And again, check that one off. Now, the other two deposits we have down here, you'll note that they're pretty distinct. They're larger dollar amounts. They're round numbers. Those might be the indications when the deposits are going to be something other than from customers. And we're going to say one's a loan and one's from ourselves as an investment in the company. So let's go back up top and update our, our report up top. I'm going to update this and see what has happened. We still have the, the checking account. No change there because all the transactions are already included. If we go then to the income statement and I once I refresh this, uh, we're going to take some of that information out of the uncategorized income and we're going to categorize it into our normal income account, which we're just going to say is sales. So now we have the sales side of things. Those two items are categorized. There's so we've uncategorized these two items. The items remaining in here, we're going to pull out of here and put them on the balance sheet as either a loan or an investment. So here's our net income at this point in time. That's it for now. Let's get out of here.